Well, hey there, it's Kim Constable. Welcome to the Kim Constable podcast, the podcast that helps you to live a happy and fulfilled life with more joy, purpose and passion. (sighs) What I'm going to talk about today. Well, what we're going to talk about today is how to build your home gym and train in it effectively. Because let's face it, COVID has fucked us all. (laughs) really COVID has fucked us all. Like, we don't know, are the gyms staying open? Are the gyms closing? Are they, you know, are you going to have to wear a mask or not wear a mask? Like, literally every single ounce of training predictability has gone out the window in our lives at the minute. And the reason why I created the new program that we have just launched this week called Basement Jacked is because all I was seeing all over Facebook was people saying, I don't know when my gym's opening again or my gym's closing. And so I'm building a home gym or my husband has built me a home gym or I find this on Facebook Marketplace or everyone's talking about building a home gym. And I realized that one of the things that we were missing in our product portfolio, if you like, was a home gym program, a program that actually used um, limited equipment, but, you know, actual equipment, like for people who had built a gym in their basement, hence the name, basement jacked and we're using it to you know train at home effectively so i created this program called basement jacked which uses pre- predominantly barbells and dumbbells but does give some substitutions for those who have cables or who have extra equipment and uh, we released it this week but of course then we were hit with an onslaught of questions um and complaints from people who had purchased it who were saying um oh i bought this program but it's really complicated you actually need loads of different equipment and i don't have that equipment and we were saying, well, you don't need loads of equipment. You don't need like a little bit of equipment. What equipment have, have you got? And they're like, well, I just have some dumbbells. Well, uh, well, how many dumbbells do you have? Two. You have two dumbbells. Yes. Uh, okay. So that's not going to be enough to complete this program. You're going to need a little bit more than two dumbbells to create Basement Jacked because it is actually a program for people who have a home gym. So it got me thinking um, that maybe one, people were just confused as to what it actually meant to have a home gym or what we meant whenever we said training in your home gym. And it also got me thinking that maybe this is a missing piece of information that people could really uh, take on or people could really learn would be that, you know, what what it does it actually take to be successful to train from home? And when I say train from home, I don't mean doing something like the butt camp, which is very specific with booty bands and um, different, you know, very, very limited equipment, but which, you know, uses the principle of metabolic stress to work the muscle six times a week. So you're predominantly working your glutes, but with other full body exercises six days a week, which is why it's so effective. But what would it take to Um, to teach people or what would people have to know in order to replicate the results that I have in my body using high intensity training, but at home with limited equipment. So I thought, let's do a podcast episode and teach people not only or teach you guys, not people, teach you guys listening to this, how to uh, not only what you would need to build a home gym if you are like, okay, COVID, you can fuck off now because I really just, I'm so fed up with either training in a mask or not being able to go to the gym or having the unpredictability of the gym. Um, and which actually, by the way, I just thought it was really bad for gym owners everywhere. I mean, I'm sure that I know the gym owners are suffering like the rest of us are suffering. But um, I thought I would create this podcast for those who want to build a home gym, but then also to teach you what it takes to train in a home gym and what you actually need. And let me tell you, it is a lot more simple than you think. So before we dive into that, uh, don't forget that we are nearing the end of October. So we're going to be choosing the winner of the podcast uh, giveaway, which we do every single month. So if you leave a review wherever you listen to this podcast, and then you take a screenshot of the review and you send it to me as a direct message on Instagram, you could be in with the chance of winning one of our Sculpted Vegan programs, including the brand new Basement Jacked, which is launched this week. So if you want to leave that review, then... Um, you know, make sure that you send it through me through to me as a DM on Instagram. My Instagram account is at the sculpted vegan. And actually, just one more thing to tell you as well: we are giving away an epic bonus at the minute, um, worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which is eight weeks worth of macro and calorie counted soy free meal plans. We're giving those away as a bonus to anybody who purchases Basement Jacked. Um, I believe it's this week only. This podcast is being released um, at the end of October. I think it's the 29th of October. This podcast is going out 2020. And we're giving away the eight week soy, eight week soy free meal plans as a bonus this week only. So if you want to get those as a bonus worth, I think uh, we were selling these as a standalone product um, at at $397. 
And we're giving them away for free uh, because I like to give loads of epic value to people because especially during a pandemic when everybody's broke and needs just a little bit of extra taking care of. So you can uh, get those sent to you this week as a bonus with the Basement Jack program. If you pick it up this week, just go to our website, thesculptedvegan.com, and you will see Basement Jacked right there in the center. And we will send you the meal plans whenever you sign up this week. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. How to build a home gym. So as I said, whenever, or at the very beginning of this podcast, whenever recently we launched, you know, Basement Jacked and we had a load of people purchase it. Like we've sold, um, we didn't even run any Facebook ads to it. And I think we sold about 400 of them to, you know, just to people on our list. So we know that it was definitely a product that everybody was interested in. But what we realized was, or that was that a lot of people who were purchasing it really didn't understand what we meant by a home gym or what it took to build a home gym or what it really takes to achieve success, you know, when you are training from home. So that's what I wanted to break down in this episode. And I guess that my first experience of training from home myself came from whenever I first started training in the gym and I downloaded a program by a very well-known fitness fitness model. And one of the things that really swayed me towards the program was that she said, you know, can be done at home or in the gym. And she said, so if you can't go to the gym one day or you can't make it to the gym, you can do, you know, that day's workout at home. And in and I was really excited by that because, of course, I was completely clueless <laughs> about training at the time. And uh, I love that she had taken each workout for the day and, you know, you she had written the entire workout for the gym. Here's your gym workout and here's your home workout. So they were kind of side by side. So it really made you think that you could either go to the gym that day or you, if you didn't have time to go to the gym, you could do the, re- the training from home and you would get comparable results. So I remember one day, I'll never forget it. I was in my bedroom and I was doing um I was doing my my workout for the day. And there were, you know, they were Bulgarian split squats and sissy squats and different things. And I remember being in the bedroom and I said no to Ryan, oh I can't go yet, but I have to get my workout in before I go. And I had my my foot on one of on the chair that we have in the corner of our bedroom and I was doing my Bulgarian split squats, you know, where I was, you know, going up and down and up and down. And I was pretty strong from practicing yoga anyway. And I remember thinking God, this is really easy. Like, I can't believe that this is all that it takes to build muscle. Like, this is like, you know, why would anyone ever go to the gym? If, like, you know, if this is all that it takes. And then I remember doing my um, my sissy squats or these reverse sissy squats. I don't know what the hell they were. No, I'm sissy squats, right? There were these like reverse lunges where you step behind you at an angle and then up to the middle and then step behind at another angle. And again, I remember just being like so excited that this is all that it was going to take for me to build an amazing body. Like just these home exercises. Why would anyone ever go to the gym? No, (laughs) completely and utterly naive. But actually, um, a lot of the responsibility did lie with me in that, you know, probably in the program, I would say, you know, she probably had explained that, you know, you would need load in order to, you know, build muscle. But certainly it wasn't front and center of of what was, you know, sold with the program. And I definitely did not understand that whenever you're training from home, what you actually really need is what you want what you're training anytime you're building muscle is what you need is load. Now what do I mean by load? I mean weights. If you are going to build muscle, you need weight. And um, Here's one of the things that really pisses me off about people who sell gym programs or training programs is that if you're promising results to somebody, you need to provide the program that will get them those results. You cannot put a gym workout and an at-home workout side by side in a in a fitness program because people will then believe that they can do the training at home and get comparable results that they would get if they were training in the gym using load. And that is a lie because the, you will not get the same results doing body weight Bulgarian split squats on a chair in your bedroom as you would doing fully loaded hack squats or, you know, barbell squats in the gym, you just won't get the same results. And to put them side by side makes people believe that they will get parable, comparable results. You know, if you're squatting 100 kilos or 220 pounds in the gym, you're you're not going to get the same results doing sissy squats at home or doing reverse lunges or whatever they are with absolutely no weight. You're just not. So the gym program must reflect the results that you are promising just like the equipment at home or the program that you undertake will shape the results that you get. 
And this is what people, you know, don't don't realize as well. Whenever people write to us and they say, oh, but, you know, I bought this program. I'm really disappointed because I have two dumbbells. And it said that it can be done with dumbbells and barbells. Well, I don't have any barbells, but I do have dumbbells. And I'm not going to be able to, to, you know, to complete this program. And I say to them, or we say to them, well, here's the thing. I think that you've kind of, you know, and it's our responsibility as marketers. It's my responsibility as someone who's selling the program to really have people understand what it is that they're purchasing. But what I usually say to them is, you know, we, I promise that you're going to sculpt an athlete's body at home, that you're going to work insanely hard and that you're going to get jacked and ripped. That is what I'm promising. I'm not promising that you're going to get toned or fit or, you know, any of those other things. I'm actually promising you're going to get insane results. Do you honestly think that you're going to get insane results with two five kilo dumbbells? And unfortunately, sometimes people are like, well, yes, I thought that I was. Well, no, not really. Whenever you point that out to them, they go, oh, okay, yes, right. Didn't really understand the promise. And I think that this is where we get a little bit, um, we get a little bit messed up sometimes is we don't really understand what it is that we're purchasing or what it is that is necessary. Whenever I designed the Jailhouse Shred, which is a body weight at home program, I designed it to be an insane program using only body weight exercises. And the results are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I do not do body weight exercises at home, one, you know, just as my sole training, uh, because I train in the gym. But Paul, who is Paul Allen, who, uh, who I employed to create the program with me, he is a ninja warrior and a parkour free runner expert. And Paul does not do any weighted exercises whatsoever. He only does body weight exercises. And he is jacked. And so are a lot of the other, even the females, the women who do calisthenics, they are jacked. Like their physiques are comparable to mine. Their back development, shoulder development, leg development, glute development, because they are pushing intensely using body weight exercises, using overloading techniques, using principles of high volume. But also, you know, like if I'm if I'm to do a pull up on a bar, I weigh 68, 69 actually kilos. So what's that about 145 pounds? Actually, 150 pounds I weigh now. So I weigh 150 pounds. So if I'm pulling myself up, right, or pushing myself up, I'm pushing 150 pounds. That's a lot of weight to push. So people underestimate body weight exercises and the results that they can get. And whenever I designed the jailhouse shred program, I designed it and I didn't say, oh, you know, I said, you're going to get insane results. You're going to get jacked and you're going to, you're going to, you know, do it using body weight exercises. Like none of my programs have light dumbbells as a primary muscle building exercise or form of exercise or primary muscle building mode, if you like. We do have, or we did have once coronavirus launched, once coronavirus launched, once coronavirus hit us, um, I did bring out an at-home workout that could be done with dumbbells. It was high volume done with dumbbells, but that was kind of supposed to be an interim program to help people to preserve the muscle tissue that they had to help my community to preserve the muscle tissue that they had while I figured out another way to help them, right? And those other ways that I figured out to help them to achieve and see results were either if your gym is open, use the gym program. If your gym is completely closed and you have no equipment, use the jailhouse shred program. And if you have a home gym, we now have Basement Jacked, which is for people who actually have a home gym, which we're going to talk about in a wee second and what that entails. So there's none of my programs, none of my programs are built around light dumbbells. And the reason why they're not built around light dumbbells is because light dumbbells, no matter how hard you fucking try, are not going to build muscle. Why are they not going to build muscle? Because for muscle, you need stimulus. You need to stimulate the muscle. You need to rip and tear and shred the muscle fibers apart using load. Load is king when it comes to building muscle. It is far superior to volume because volume just means doing more sets or more reps. But at what point do you stop doing more sets or more reps, right? You might be able to do 100 or 200 reps if you only have like one kilo dumbbells. So um, load is king. You're always going to need load. And I mean like load in the form of weight plates, especially if you want to build muscle in your legs, right? You're never, ever, ever going to be able to build muscle if you don't have 
load. And I think that this is where people get confused. So some people come into, you know, the they purchase Basement Jacked or they purchase one of our programs and they go and they think, oh, well, this is great because the Sculpted Vegan has has now brought out this new program of Basement Jacked and I have two dumbbells at home. So I'm going to purchase Basement Jacked and I'm going to do this workout with two dumbbells. And they buy Basement Jacked and they look and they go, oh my God, I need a pull-up bar and I need a, a bench and I need a squat rack and I need some weights. And then they write to, to me and they go, well, I'm really annoyed because I want to get jacked from home, but I only have two dumbbells. And I'm like, well, you're not going to get jacked from home if you only have two dumbbells because that is a physical impossibility. And even though I am extremely talented and know how to build muscle, I ain't a bloody miracle worker. <laughs> you know, so there's only so much that I can do. <laughs> and I cannot magic muscle for you with two pink dumbbells and a Swiss ball at home. And they go, Oh, so just so I can dispel some of this, these myths that are kind of surrounding the results, I thought that I'll just hammer it home a wee bit here in the podcast. So the first thing that you need whenever you, you start to build your home gym or whenever you uh, whenever you think when you know gyms are closed, I'm going to start training from home is you need to know what your goal is, right? And if your goal is truly to build muscle and change your physique, then you got to get real about what is required. And what is required is load. Now, one thing that you do not need is a shitload of fancy equipment. You don't need a shitload of fancy equipment. You only need a small amount of equipment. You don't even need a massive amount of fancy exercises. You only need a, a small amount of core exercises. But what you do 100% without question need is weight is load. Are you beginning to believe me here? Because I'm like, I know I've said this like a million times, but I really have to hammer this home, guys, that if you do want to build muscle from home in your home gym, using high intensity training, using gym techniques, not using calisthenics techniques, which is a completely separate um, thing, which we actually will bring in a wee bit to basement jacks anyway, because it is a really good way to supplement the the working from load with weights and barbells and, and dumbbells, whatever. But um, you do need some load. And where I first realized that I that I could I could really achieve fantastic results with a um, a small amount of equipment was whenever I started traveling a lot with work and I started traveling a lot once I launched the Sculpted Vegan I would you know travel to America and I would go to London and I would go to different places and and Europe and things and I started having to train in hotel gyms. Now, up until the point where I was traveling um, or whenever I first started training in the gym, I was obviously following, you know, gym programs or I was going to a personal trainer. I was going to Curtis, my trainer at the time. And then I started going to train with Mark. And while I was, uh, for the first couple of years, I was just following my trainer's program and I was just following the program that I had created for myself to sculpt my body on stage. But I had always had access to a gym and I'd never really had to, um, to figure out a different way of doing things to achieve the same result. And I remember one day at the kind of the epiphany or the, the turning point for me, the moment when I realized, oh my God, I'm actually making this much more complicated than I need to, was whenever I traveled to a hotel um, for work once. And I remember calling them in advance and I said to them, can you tell me, do you have a gym? Because I'll need to train while I'm there. And this was actually like a, uh, this was a deciding factor for me for choosing this hotel over another one. Now what I do is I actually, I actually don't even go to the hotel gym. Usually I, I look for a gym in the area whenever I'm traveling. But I called them and I said, do you have a gym? And they were like, oh, yes, yes, we have a gym. And I said, oh, that's perfect. They said, look, check-in isn't until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. But if you arrive a little, you know, I said, like, I'll arrive a bit early and I'll train in the gym and then, you know, and then we'll check into the room. So I arrived there at about, I think about 1 p.m. And I said, I'm just going to go and use the gym. So I trained, so I changed and I went into the gym, right? And I walked in and it was a carpeted side room in the hotel, which had two exercise bikes um, and I think two treadmills and one rack of dumbbells. And that was it. That was the gym. And I remember looking around going, are they fucking serious? Is this the gym? I was like, oh my God, like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? There's so many dumbbells. And I remember feeling really annoyed. I remember being like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Like, I have a freaking workout to do. And I chose this hotel because they told me they had a gym and I'm not going to start running on the, you know, the treadmill or whatever. I need to lift weights. I need to lift load. So I thought to myself, oh my God, right, what am I going to do? And I think I was supposed to be training back that day, but I thought, I looked at the dumbbells and I thought, no, I'm sure I can figure this out. Let's see if I can 
create my shoulder. Usually on a Thursday, I do shoulders and biceps. And I think this was a, a Wednesday. So I should have been doing back, but I thought, let's look and see if I can create a shoulder and biceps workout out of these dumbbells. Because I thought there's, you know, normally I lifted with machines, but I never change my exercises. Anyone who trains with me will know I never change my exercises. I literally do the same exercises in the same order with the same sets and reps every single week, week in, week out for the last three years. But all I do is add more load every time. So I'm always pushing for more weight or more reps or both preferably. So I looked at the dumbbells and I thought, okay, military press. Yep, I usually do a machine military press, but I can do a dumbbell military press, no problem at all. So I, you know, I did four sets of dumbbell military press. I obviously didn't have a spotter for the final sets, but it was fine. I remember, I think I still managed to push like 24 kilos each hand. So what's that? 24 kilos is 52 pounds, I think, um, each hand. So I was really pleased with myself. I that was great. So then I thought, right, well, what's my next, you know, exercise? Okay, it's a side raise. So I thought, right, dumbbell side raise. I usually did side raises with the dumbbells anyway. So I thought two different types of side raises, one with, you know, both arms together. And then one, I thought I can hold on to something. I can hold on to the back of the bench and I can do a single one arm side raise. So I felt very accomplished after doing that. Great, shoulders are on fire. And then I was like, okay, what's my third exercise? Rear delt fly. I usually do it with a machine, with a cable, because it's much easier. But I thought, okay, I don't have a cable. What are my options? Bent over. Over rear dumb rear you know dumbbell fly because obviously these are all exercises that I've done in the past that I've taught other people but I just would never normally add them into my uh, repertoire so I did a rear delt dumbbell fly bent over sitting on the um, on the seat that was great next thing what am I doing next okay. Uh, front raise, dumbbell front raise, no problem at all. So I picked up the dumbbells, did my front raises, dumbbell upright row, did my next one was a dumbbell upright row. So I'd managed to complete my full shoulder workout that I normally did with machines and cables with just dumbbells and my shoulders were on fire. So then I was like, okay, biceps, what do I normally do? I normally do a cable bicep curl. So I thought, well, I'll just do a straight dumbbell bicep curl without a curl at the top. So I did that first. Then I did a just a, a dumbbell curl um, with a curl at the top where I like literally curled. So it's almost like a hammer where your thumbs are facing forward. And then as I brought the dumbbells up, I curled them in, which just activates the bicep a little more. And then the last one was supposed to be a preacher curl. But of course, I didn't have a preacher, which is like where you're leaning over something. Um, well, actually, I do an elevated preacher curl on a machine, but I didn't have that. So I looked at the bench and I thought, OK, what about what if I just lean over the bench and put one arm right over the back of the bench and push it right up into my armpit? And I do a dumbbell curl that way. So I managed to do a preacher one arm dumbbell curl and I completed a full shoulder and biceps workout with no cables, no machines, no barbells, and my shoulders were on fire. And the next day, because I had stimulated a whole new amount of muscle fibers, you know, from using these dumbbells, I couldn't believe how sore my shoulders were. And in fact, as I'm sitting here today, um, my shoulders and my traps and my biceps are so sore because my husband and I were away in London for a couple of days and we were training in the hotel gym in London. Now, I had him there to spot me, which was great. But it was funny because he trains in the gym with me all the time, but, you know, here in Belfast. But whenever we're traveling, he's like, right, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? What are we doing now? And I'm like, okay, dumbbell military pass, right? Dumbbell fly, dumbbell rear delt this. And I, so I was, you know, telling him or whatever, and he was uh, spotting me and I was spotting him. And my shoulders and biceps are so sore today from just using dumbbells. But this was the moment when I realized you don't need fancy equipment to build muscle. You just need load. Now, I'm sure there are some exercise mind. I know there are. There's some, it's harder to train legs if you don't have, if you only had uh, dumbbells because you do need obviously heavier weight in order to train legs. So it would have been harder for me to train legs in that gym using only dumbbells. I would have had to do, I've done heavy Bulgarian split squats, a lot of one-legged work with dumbbells because obviously then you're, you're placing a big load on one leg rather than on two legs, which is easier. But it wouldn't have been, it would have been uh, harder, but it wouldn't have been impossible. But it really made me realize you don't need fancy equipment in order to build muscle. You just need load. Because if you think back to Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, all of the big bodybuilders in their day, they didn't have fancy machines. If you've ever seen any of the the um, the videos, there's actually one called, oh my God, what's it called? Pumping Iron, it's called. It's a, uh, a documentary that was made about Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Um, Oh, Louis, someone can't remember his name, but all the big bodybuilders years ago. And 
I think it was made in the 1980s or the 1990s and it followed their journey and it showed them training in the gym and they didn't have all of the big fancy machines that we have now. They just had a lot of iron, a lot of clanking, a lot of, you know, there were rudimentary cable machines, but certainly not the high-tech gym equipment that we have today. And I think many of us have become really reliant on this high-tech gym equipment and we feel completely resourceless whenever we don't have it. But what actually will make you an expert in something, what will truly um, make you a bodybuilder or an athlete at your core is when you are presented with a problem and you have to figure it out. That is what makes someone an expert in anything, is when you're presented with a problem and you have to figure out a way to get a result despite having limited data or limited equipment. And if you look back, like I said, to pumping iron to you know, the big bodybuilders years ago, they were just squatting with big heavy weights. They were mostly doing a barbell squat and a hack squat. But a lot of times, like all they had were were barbells and you really don't need any more than a big barbell on your back and a lot of weight plates, you know, on either side to build a really great set of pins. And truly, that is all you need. And I remember going to stay with a friend of mine in France. Um, it was actually last summer and her husband is a triathlete and he had a gym in the house. And all, But all he did as a triathlete were squats, uh, deadlifts and some, you know, some biceps and, and back exercises and things. And I remember going into his gym and he had a squat rack in the corner. He had a deadlift platform and he had um, a, a one bench and he had, a, but he had a rack of dumbbells and one big barbell. I think he had a lighter barbell too, actually like a 10 kilo barbell and a 25 kilo um, Olympic bar. And he had like this pulley system that he had erected, which I thought was genius, where he had put like a carabiner. He had screwed something into the ceiling, like a big, massive, long screw into the joists of the of the roof. And he had then put like a carabiner, which is like a big clip into, um, you know, hung it from the roof. And then he had fed a piece of wire or like a, a rope or whatever um, up through the loop and attached a, uh, what do you call it, a kettlebell on the end of it. So he had like this hook, right, that he could hook underneath the kettlebells so he could put different weights on there. And he used those for tricep pushdowns and for, you know, face pulls and different, anything that he needed a cable for where he had to push down. He was using this rudimentary pulley system with a, a kettlebell on it. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is actually so much fun. And I had so much fun doing my, you know, thinking of all of these different exercises, doing one arm bicep curls and, and cable and pushdowns and overheads for triceps and all of these different ways of figuring out ways that I could work the muscle using all of this new equipment. And it was absolutely brilliant. And I really have so much fun now whenever I travel thinking up new ways that I can work the muscle and that I can, you know, uh, still do my same gym workout, which I'm going to tell you in a minute exactly what it is or what that I do so you can use it to inspire yours. But I love figuring out new ways of using the equipment in gyms or in different, you know, if I'm ever traveling or I'm staying with friends or whatever, and just using what they have in order to still get phenomenal results. So what do you need in order to build a home gym, right? So you're thinking, okay, Kim, you've sold me home gym. I'm totally going to pick up a copy of Basement Jacked, which by the way is only $97. And that includes the full five-day workout plus advice on cardio, nutrition, um, on training to failure, on everything that you need to be successful in, in bodybuilding and training from home, as well as information about how to build your home gym, as well as eight weeks worth of calorie and macro counted meal plans that are soy free with recipes. All that for $97 and a private Facebook group with 24-hour coaching. Oh my God. Like seriously, I always, always, always over deliver on my programs. So what do you need to build a home gym, right? Well, first of all, first of all, before I tell you what equipment you need to build a home gym, here's what you actually need first. You ready? You need a gym program that works. <laughs> You need a five-day split gym program, preferably, because if you have a home gym, you have no fucking excuse. You have no excuse. If you can roll down into your gym in your pajamas and you don't even have to get dressed, you have zero excuses for not for you know not doing it right you you can't say i didn't have the time to drive to the gym i just i would have had to get up too early the gym was closed i had to wear a mask no nope, none of that is going to wash if you have a home gym right but you do need a gym program that works preferably a 5 day split so here is the 5 day split that i teach in every 
single one of my programs except the butt camp, which is all about the glutes. But in every other one of my programs, this is um, how the program is split. Monday or whatever is your first day of the week. I train Monday to Friday because I like to have the weekends off. So Monday is chest and triceps. Tuesday is legs, but it's mostly quad focused exercises. Wednesday is back. So just back. That's all we do. But obviously there's secondary muscles that get worked as well. Uh, Thursday is shoulders and biceps. And then Friday is legs again, but it's glutes and hamstring focused. So you need a gym program that works. You need a gym program that hits the muscles from all the different angles and all the different sides, because it's not enough to just do one exercise. I mean, the only exercise I would say, if you were if you were going to train legs and you could only do one exercise, then the one exercise that I would recommend that you would do would be a squat. But you're going to get much better results if you do squats, lunges, Bulgarian split squats, um, deadlifts, all that kind of stuff. You're going to work the body so much more efficiently and effectively and build more muscle if you're able to hit the muscle from all sides. Because that is actually what really sculpts an incredible physique. It's angles, using all different types of angles. You know, whenever I train back, for example, I will do a wide grip pull down, then I do a close grip row, then I do a low row, which almost has exactly the same action as a close grip row, except you're pulling from down in front of you and back up, squeezing the elbows back and up. Whereas with a, a seated cable row, you're more pulling from the front of you in line with your belly button back towards your stomach. So it's you're not pulling from an angle up and back, you're pulling back towards you. Then we do, um, well, sometimes we'll do like a barbell row, sometimes we'll do a T-bar row or Sometimes we just uh, go straight into, after doing a low row, we go straight into doing pull-ups, chin-ups, or we do a close grip cable pull-down. And the reason why I, I avoid exercises that, you know, like deadlifts and T-bar rows and things now is because quite simply, they hurt my back, right? And I just, I need to go really, really, really heavy in order to stimulate the muscle, but they they hurt my back. So I don't like going heavy and there's no point in me doing them if I'm not challenging my body to do more than it's currently doing. But the risk of me injuring myself is too great for me to go there. But if you are a new trainer or you are relatively new to the gym or you don't have any injury that prevents you from doing deadlifts or any of those, you know, bent over barbell rows, then I highly recommend that you put them into your program. But what you do need to do is hit the muscle from all angles. It's not enough just to do one tricep exercise. You must do three. Three, because tri means three. You have three different heads of the tricep and you need to hit it in three different ways in order to stimulate all three sides of the tricep. Have you ever seen guys walking around and they have big chests and big arms and tiny little legs? That's because men generally tend to not focus on training their legs because men don't really care about having nice legs. Men just care about having big muscular chests and big muscular biceps. But the first thing that I look at when I look at a man is his legs. And in fact, it's the first thing I look like when I look at whenever I look at a woman as well. There's a couple of women who train in the gym where I train and they have really, really muscular upper bodies, really well-defined um, shoulders and back. And then you look at their bum and their legs and they have no bum and no legs. So they don't have a balanced shape. It's really important to have a balanced shape. And if you only work the, the one part of the body, if you only work chest, but you don't work your back, then you're not giving yourself a balanced shape. If you, ne you need to work the front and the the back, the up and the down, and both sides, the left and the right, in order to have a balanced overall strong body and not risk injury. So the first thing that you need to have is a balanced overall gym program that works. Then once you have a core set of exercises, you look at the equipment that you have and either you do the exercises if they suit the equipment you have, or you substitute accordingly. So, um, for example, I if you had a say you had a pulley system in your home gym, right? So say you had a really good pulley or cable system, then you would be able to do if the first exercise on your gym program. So let's say you don't even have basement jacked, okay, which is specifically to be done with barbells and dumbbells. But let's say you didn't have that. Let's say you had the four week shred, which is a gym program. So you're thinking, well, how can I adapt the four week shred to be a home program? Well, it's actually quite easy. All you do is you look at the um, you look at the exercise. And then you think to yourself or you ask Auntie Google, Auntie Google is a great resource for things like this. You ask Auntie Google, what is a substitute for a wide grip lat pulldown? 
That's always the first exercise in all of my gym programs because it is a compound exercise which warms up the whole back and you want to always work the biggest muscle group first because you want to tire that muscle group out. So by the time you go to work the smaller muscle groups, the bigger muscles aren't taking over and this because they're tired and the smaller ones have a chance to get worked. So you would ask Auntie Google what is a substitute for a wide grip lat pull down and Auntie Google would tell you a really good substitute is a wide grip pull up. So a wide grip pull-up can be done on any bar, anywhere, as long as it is stable. In our house, we have two pull-up bars in the house upstairs. We have one um, across a bit of the hallway where it goes into one of the bedrooms. And then we have one in the bedroom or leading into the bedroom in Jack's room, who's my youngest. Actually, Kai has one in his bedroom too. My second son has one in his bedroom. So my kids can literally leap around onto bars all the time and just pull themselves up any time they want, which is fantastic for their strength and their physicality and their self-esteem, actually, because then they, they build the belief that they can do hard things. So a wide grip, um, a wide grip pull-up, and if you don't have, if you can't do a pull-up with your own body weight just yet, there's two different things that you can do. First one is you could get yourself one of those big, long elastic bands, resistance bands. You loop it around the bar. So it's a loop at the bottom and you put either your foot in it or two feet in it or your knees in it. And that takes a little bit of the resistance off and makes it a wee bit easier for you to pull yourself up. And if you can't do that or you don't have access to a, a bar or access to a band, then what you do is you work on the negatives first. So there's two ways you can work on pull-ups if you can't actually uh, achieve a full pull-up. You can work on the negatives, which means that you jump up. So you grab the bar and you jump up so that your chest is on the bar and your chin's above it. And you slowly lower yourself all the way down with control. So if you cannot do one single positive rep, so you can't pull yourself up to the bar for one single rep, then you work on 10 negative reps. So you jump up and you lower yourself with as much control as you possibly can. That's one. Then you put your feet on the ground, you jump up again, you lower yourself with as much control as you possibly can. That's two. So you can you continue doing it this way. And then eventually what you do is you work yourself on the positive part. So what you 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 pull up as much as you possibly can. So you grab the bar and you activate your muscles and you pull like crazy. Now maybe you only manage to lift your body up an inch, maybe even only a centimeter in the beginning, but just activating and strengthening those muscles and trying to pull yourself up with that action will make you stronger. So if you work on the negative part of the, the lat, of just lowering yourself down with control, and then you start to work on, you know, pulling yourself as much as you can and maybe holding for a few seconds before releasing, even if you only move yourself up an inch or a centimeter, eventually you will get stronger and stronger and stronger. So you can go two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches. You can move yourself up and eventually you'll be able to do a full pull up and you'll be able to work on your strength. And that is how you build muscle by overloading the, the overloading the muscle with stimulus. And then if you, you know, so let's say the next exercise in your uh, repertoire is a seated row, okay? A cable seated row. You don't have cables. So what you would do is you would get yourself a, an Olympic bar, 25 kilo Olympic bar. You would load it up with weight and you would grip it with both hands. If you don't have a close grip attachment, you grip it with both hands and you straddle the bar and then you row it in towards your chest. It's exactly the same action as a cable seated row, but it can be done with a, with a landmine bar. Then the next one, let's say it's a low row. So this is what I would do in the in a machine low row in the gym. Don't have a machine low row at home. So what can I do? Well, a reverse grip bent over row. So you keep your hands just about waist um, distance apart, about hip distance apart. You reverse the grip so that your fingers are facing up. You hinge forward from the hips and push your butt out behind you. And then you row the bar in towards your belly button with control. And you do sets of that and you load it up with weight and that will... Get, do the same kind of action as a low row. Same with a close grip pull down. So let's say you don't have a cable close grip pull down. Well, what do you do? Chin ups. You grab the bar, you get yourself a chin up bar that has two bars. Even if you don't have one, you just do a reverse grip chin up. So let's say you just have a straight bar. Well, you put your hands about shoulder distance apart, you reverse the grip so that your fingers are facing back and you do the same thing. If you can't pull yourself up, then you jump up and you lower with control. You do negative reps in the beginning if you don't have a band to help you. And then you work on just activating the muscles and pulling you up. Even if you only pull yourself a quarter of the way up, you still keep working on those. You do 10 negatives and two quarter pulls and you work on increasing and increasing and increasing consistently over time. And eventually you will have your pull up. So, you know, it's 
it's the same with all the other days as well. You know, if you only had a barbell at home, so you had a barbell and some weights, then you just do squats. But you can do all different types of squats. You can do squats with your feet, um, shoulder distance apart, so closer together works more of the quads. You can work with your feet slightly wider in a traditional stance, which works the whole leg, the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings, everything. You can set your feet super wide in a sumo position, which works more of the glutes. So the wider the legs, the more of the glutes are worked. Same with deadlifts. You can have deadlift convention or you can have deadlift, a sumo deadlift where the feet are super wide and the toes are pointing out, which works more into the glutes and the hamstrings. There are so many different ways that you can achieve phenomenal results at home with very, very basic equipment. But here is one thing I'm going to say before I move on to telling you what equipment you need. If you want to achieve similar results at home that you would get in a gym, you do need equipment. You do need equipment, right? You don't need a huge amount of equipment, but you do need load. You need a big Olympic barbell, preferably some smaller barbells or a 10 kilo barbell if you can. And you need a range of plates from say 1.5 kilos, 1.25 kilos, uh, which I think is about, um, I'm not, see, I should give it in pounds because I have such a, a wide American audience, um, about two and a half pounds up to five pounds, up to 20 pounds, 25 pounds, 50, I think it's 50 pounds, 45 pounds, but yeah, 45 pounds is 20, 20 kilos. So you do need a range of plates so that you can, as you progress through your sets, you add more load so that you're hitting failure in the final set of every exercise. So you do need a range of plates. You don't need a massive range of plates in the beginning, but you do need a range so that you can build your strength over time and you can build up over time. So you do not need a complicated set of equipment. You do not need a complicated set of exercises, but what you do need is a range of weight. Because if you don't have a range of weight or a range of load, you are not going to build muscle. Now, so what equipment is actually needed in order to build, in order to complete, let's say, Basement Jacked, our new program that we've just released? Well, you need barbells. You need at least a 25 kilo barbell, but but if you're not strong enough to do things like skull crushers, um, overhead tricep extensions with a 25 kilo bar, which very few people would be, very few women would be that strong in the beginning, then you will need lighter weight. So say um, a 10 kilo bar. And if you even can't do it with a 10 kilo bar, then you you can do it with dumbbells. So you do need a range of dumbbells, but you do need to be able to complete the exercises. So you need preferably a 10 kilo uh, barbell. And by the way, all this equipment is going to be in the show notes. Um, so don't worry about writing it all down. You can simply go to the sculptedvegan.com forward slash podcast, uh, go to this episode, look in the show notes, and we will actually upload a PDF there as well. Uh, my, my assistant, Christina, actually listens to all of these podcasts and then writes down all of the notes that I um, that I say that I'm, I'm going to provide. So we are going to provide a PDF with a list of equipment um, at the website, the sculptedvegan.com forward slash podcast go to this episode and you can download from there. So you need barbells, you need dumbbells, a range of dumbbells. You can get the dumbbells, I can't remember the name of them, but um, they're ones where they they click into like a system and then you can change, bow flex, that's what they're called. You change the weights at the right hand side, you click like a little dial so you can, it has like a huge range of weights um, and they're a great time saver. The only problem with the bow flex is that they are very wide and very clumsy. So if you could build up a rack of dumbbells, it would be better, but I do realize it is expensive. So just do what you can with what you've got. Um, you do need weight plates. So you need them in from two and a half pounds up to 45 pounds. And if you can squat a reasonable amount or you do intend to squat from home or to do hip thrusts or glute bridges and to really build up your glutes, then you will need to build up a range of weight plates. I would, I would hip thrust, um, let me see, 300 kilos in the gym, which is 660 pounds. So if I was to hip thrust from home, I would need a serious amount of weight. But very few people are as strong as me. So you may not need that amount in the beginning, but most people underestimate how strong they are. And they actually are a lot stronger than they are. So always, you know, be, be trying to add and add and add to your equipment as you go on. Um, and you definitely need a pull-up bar as well. So those are the four things you need to get started. Barbells, dumbbells, weight plates, and a pull-up bar. Because with a pull-up bar, you can work your biceps, you can work your triceps, you can work your back from all angles. I mean, even if you only had a pull-up bar, you could do an absolutely epic back workout 
with just a pull-up bar. Yes, you could. It's insane what you can do with just a pull-up bar. So you definitely do need a pull-up bar. Um, if you had two of those handles that you can use for tricep dips, those are really handy as well. And they are as cheap as chips. They're literally two like D-shaped uh, handles that, that sit on the ground that you put your hands on, you grip onto them, and you can do chest dips, tricep dips. Um, you can actually use them as a pull-up bar as well. You can lie underneath them and do like a um, like a plank pull-up, which is really, really good for the back. So two of those are really handy as well. Now, what is kind of optional but recommended? Well, a pulley system is really, really good. If you have some kind of cable system that you can purchase, you're never, ever going to regret it. Absolutely epic for um, tricep push downs and overhead tricep extensions and also for face pulls and different things like that really good for working into the smaller muscles but again you can just have something screwed into the roof you know that attaches to a kettlebell what is a, re a really really good tip i got from my friend in france was he had bike racks which he would have used to stack his plates in so you know the bike racks that you would like park the front wheel of your bike into well he had used he had a whole row of these bike racks and he used to stack his weight plates in between the bike rack Oh my God, it was absolutely genius. So um, I always recommend that people do that now because it was so good for keeping all the plates, you know, stacked on their sides. Um, mirrors to check your form. If you can put mirrors up on the wall, you're never going to regret it because then you can look at yourself as your muscles grow as well. And you can kind of like, ooh, look at the pomp. The pomp, as Arnie used to call it. Look at the pomp. So you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can also check your form. Really good for that. And also floor pads as well, just to make it a little bit quieter and to make sure that you're not chipping your floor or you're not chipping your, you know, damage your your weights and things really good to have floor pads one of the things that uh, one of our members recommended recently which i never thought of is you can actually get these foam or these rubber pads to put down in the um in horses stables so you can get them from equestrian suppliers square rubber pads and you can put those down on the floor even if you just create like a square or like a platform of them you will never regret it because they'll be so nice to train on and so much easier for your weights and really that is all you need to, to train from home. You just, you know, and you got to get excited about it. You got to be like, yeah, I'm going to be like old school. You know, I'm going to put like, you know, your cap on backwards and you're going to sweat and, and you know, and, and train in your bare feet and throw that big barbell on your back. And, you know, well, of course, actually one thing I didn't, I didn't mention, which kind of goes without saying, but probably good to mention it is you definitely need some, some kind of rack that you can do bench presses on and squats. Okay. You need something to rack the bar on. Now you can just get two stands if you want, which have hooks on the top, which you can literally just move up and down for a bench press or, you know, for a, um, to hang a barbell on. I've even had seen people ha like have to, depends on the height that you are, but have two hooks hanging from the ceiling that you hook the, that you, you put the barbell on for, you know, and then just get underneath it and wedge it onto your shoulders and then lift it up and back. But you do need something obviously to um, hook the bar onto for squats. And because otherwise you can't lift a barbell up onto your back for squats, because at some point that barbell is going to be too heavy for you to like, you know, <laughs> you to like throw up onto your back. And if it's not too heavy to throw up onto your back, then you're not lifting heavy enough heavy enough you need you need to lift heavier and also you need a bench you need something to lie on so you can do uh, bench presses it would be better if the bench actually moved up and down so that you can do like an incline bench or an incline dumbbell press uh, and then it goes flat for a flat bench press because you need to work at the top of the chest with an incline and then you need to work the lower chest with a flat bench press so you definitely do need a bench as well but that kind of went without saying in the beginning but it's probably worth putting it in here so that people know that that is what is needed because if you just have like one 10 kilo barbell right that is not enough to train from home it's not enough to do high intensity training training from home you do need a wee bit more than a 10 kilo barbell but um this was not a very long podcast it was really just kind of more of an informative podcast but one thing that I do want to reiterate before we finish is that you really, I'm going to say it again, you really do not need complicated equipment to build muscle. In fact, one of the things I love to do is I really love to go back to basics and not rely on fancy equipment. You know, it's like whenever you go back to using really simple ingredients to cook, like there's something really satisfying about just using simple, simple ingredients to cook. You know, I, I remember purchasing a book recently, which was just like the five 
or seven simple ingredients in each dish and each dish only had seven ingredients and it was just there's something so wonderfully refreshing about just using seven ingredients to cook and it really you were able to taste the really simple flavors and it was just a joy to cook with because this is before I had a private chef because um, it was so simple and so easy and that's exactly what your home gym training can be like you really don't need a massive overwhelming amount of equipment you know how overwhelmed sometimes you feel when you first walk into a gym and you're like oh my god what are all these things for even sometimes now I go into a gym and I look at a piece of equipment and I'm like what the hell is this thing for and how do you even use it and I'm standing there staring at it scratching my head and moving around it and looking at it and trying to figure out what the hell it does but um and it's kind of like that you know it, it really takes you back to basics and you're like I know exactly what this bar does I know exactly where it's supposed to go and I know exactly how I'm supposed to move my body and you can work on improving your form on you know really activating your your transverse abdominis and your your core and your pelvic floor and your squats you can work on you know on on slowly going heavier in order to you know build up strength on really activating and squeezing the glutes you can whenever you're working with free weights it really works a huge amount of muscles in your body and so not only do you get a really effective muscle workout quite often you're getting a really effective cardiovascular workout anytime anyone who's ever trained legs the way i i recommend that you train legs and will know that you know doing a leg workout is is super, super, super intense. You know, my heart rate goes up to about 160, 170 during my my leg workout. So it really is more like a hit workout than anything. It requires a huge amount of cardiovascular strength. And whenever you're using free weights, you do use a hell of a lot of muscle fibers and you tend to burn more fat because you are activating more, you're using more of your body. So therefore you're burning more calories, which is kind of a win-win because most people want to keep their body fat low as well as building muscle. But the last thing that you really... The, you really gain from building a home gym and, and training from home with really simple equipment is you learn not to be reliant on anyone or anything for your success. You learn to problem solve. And whenever you learn to problem solve and you learn to get the same results that other people are getting but with a much simpler technique and a much simpler range of equipment, you suddenly you feel your self-esteem rising. You're like, oh my God, like this is actually far easier than I thought. This is like, look at me, go me. I can like get these epic results and I don't need to even leave the house. I, in fact, I don't even need to get dressed. I can go to the gym in my pajamas and I can get amazing results with this really, really simple equipment. And it's really quite fun building up your home gym as well. I mean, even actually after I record this podcast here, I'm actually leaving here to go to our local gym supplier um, because we're building up a home gym in the house at the minute for the kids because they have a personal training session three times a week. And um, they're really starting to get strong, especially my 15-year-old. He's really discovered weight training and he absolutely loves it. And so his PT comes uh, three times a week and actually, sorry, twice a week. And he is now building up his strength and we're starting to build up our equipment. And, you know, in the beginning, you you just build, you know, get a couple of pieces and then you get another couple of pieces and then another couple of pieces. And our home gym is really starting to take uh, to take shape now. We have a big uh, cage arriving this week, you know, with squat and bench and, and a platform and pulley system and everything. So just as the kids are getting more into it, they're really enjoying experimenting with the new equipment and finding their new strengths, if you like. And uh, and they're they're absolutely loving it. And you will really have fun building up your home gym whenever you really commit to it. And it does require a commitment because, you know, either you're going to train at home or you're going to train in the gym. You're generally never going to do both. And so or some people actually I know in the program and my programs, they train mostly from home, except they go to the gym to train legs because they just don't have the same range of equipment at home. Or maybe they have injuries and they can't free squat, or whatever. So they do go to the gym to train legs, but they do everything else at home. But it does give you higher self esteem because you find yourself with more options. You know, you can train from home, you can train in the gym, you find yourself, you know, anytime you do go to the gym or you travel, you go in and you don't have the same equipment that you have at home. You're like, hey, no problem at all. I can substitute. I can do this. I can do this. I have all of these different exercises exercises that I can choose. I can pull out of my exercise bag, my repertoire of, of exercises, no matter where I am in the world. And you find yourself really gaining an enormous amount of experience. And with that enormous amount of experience comes an enormous amount of confidence. And with confidence comes the body that you have always dreamed of because you find yourself more resourceful. And the more resourceful you find yourself, the better your chance of success. So who knew that building a home gym could cause you to be more resourceful and more successful 
and have higher self-esteem. But like anything in life, it really does. If you just take on the challenge and you realize that it doesn't have to be as complicated as you're making it in your mind, things generally are an awful lot simpler than we would like them to be. Uh, If we just look for ways to solve our problems, we will always find that there is something available for us, which is much more cost effective and much more simple than we ever imagined it would be. Um, And so if you want to pick up your copy of Basement Jacked, you can go to our website, thesculptedvegan.com. But it is absolutely not necessary to go and pick up a copy of Basement Jacked. If you have any of our gym programs, whether you have the four-week shred, the one-week shred, the 12-week shred, the 18-month program, whatever one of our programs you have, you can simply adapt the exercises, which always follow the same format. You can adapt them by just asking Google for a substitution for that exercise and then build up your home gym based on the equipment that I have advised in this podcast. You can go to scaldedbeacon.com forward slash podcast, find this episode. I'm really not sure what number it is. I apologize. Um, And you can find find the episode there, but it'll be like, you know, you'll you'll find it easily anyway. It'll be like building a home gym or whatever, something something very simple. And uh, download the PDF that we have provided, which will tell you all about building a home gym, exactly what to do. And you can just ask Google for a substitute exercise for the exercise in one of the other programs that we have. And you can use that to train from home if you don't have the cash resources at the minute, because I know many people are struggling with COVID. I totally get that. Um, And I want everybody to have access to this information without having to spend any more money if it's not within their budget. So you can ask Google to substitute the exercises and you can build your home gym. But what I want you to know more than anything, right, is that anything you want is possible. Where there is a will, there is a way. So if you want to get epic results from home with your home gym, you totally can, whether you buy Basement Jacked or not, whether you buy another program or not. Don't think that you have to be in a gym in order to get good results. You don't. You can find a way from home. You can build up your home gym. If you don't have access to weights, find some bottles and fill them with sand, right? Get buckets, right? Buckets and fill them with sand. Get like a really strong broom handle. Get two buckets, fill them with sand, hang them off the ends of the broom handle and squat those. Do something. Don't tell yourself that you are at the mercy of, you know, having no money or no resources or no space. You are not. There are people in this world who make it work and find or get really, really good results. So commit to being one of them. And I promise you that you can get the results. It really does not need to be as complicated as you would believe. So just a really quick episode for you today, more of an informational one than an inspirational one, I would say. Um, I hope that you did enjoy it. I hope that you find it useful. Um, please do not feel that you're at the mercy of COVID-19. I fucking hate coronavirus. I'm so sick of the bloody thing. I want my money back for 2020. So I'm really just trying to help people to realize that even though we feel resourceless in many ways, and sometimes we feel at the mercy of our governments and them closing gyms and closing restaurants and oh, all the stuff they've done over here now in Northern Ireland, which I really don't agree with, but that's a subject for another podcast. Um, I just want you to know that you do have choices. One thing you always have in this life is the choice. You always have a choice. Even if you find yourself in a situation that you did not choose or you would not choose, you're forced into a situation, you can still choose how you react to it. You can always choose how you feel about something and how you react to it. So you always have choice. So you, I, I want you to know that you have so many options available to you to continue your muscle building journey or to start your muscle building journey or to get back your pre-COVID body or to build the body that you've never had post-COVID, but now you're motivated to do something for you and to feel strong in your life. All those options are open to you if you will only look for them. And I will continue to try to bring you as many resources as I can through this podcast and through the free resources we have on our website as well. Even if you um, if you have never purchased a program from us and you don't have the resources to, go to the website, thesculptedvegan.com. You can download a free gym program from our website and a free meal plan. We have so many free res- free resources on the website. So whether you can afford to pay for it or not, we have you covered. I've got your back and I always will. Swear to God, I'm here to take care of you in any way that I can. And I hope that you know that. I hope that you feel that from me through these podcasts. Okay, guys, have an awesome week wherever you are. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you next week for another episode of the Kim Constable podcast. Have a wonderful week wherever you are. Bye for now. Big hug from me to you. Mwah.